One of my favorite things to do on this channel is statistically ranking Pokemon. I've found the strongest, I've found the weakest, I've found the tastiest. But all those Pokemon have had their time in the limelight. Today, I want to show some love to the least-est Pokemon. I'm talking the straight vanilla ice cream, the C-plus student, the most average of them all. Now, as you may be aware, there are a lot of different definitions for average that I could use, and I'm sure you're wondering which one I'll pick. But that's the wrong question. You ask which definition of average I will choose, I ask why I must choose to begin with. This is the statistically most average Pokemon. Pokemon in this case being plural. Because it's it's the same it's the same both ways. It didn't work as much as I thought. We're doing a bunch of them. Richard, hit that intro. This video was suggested by Stylish and voted on by all my supporters on Patreon. For just a couple of bucks a month, you can get access to all sorts of cool perks like a private Discord server, early access to every video, and exclusive live streams. Next month, I'm gonna try my hand at playing some Pokemon Run and Bun, which is apparently so hard that you need to create whole spreadsheets and calculations for every single battle to even stand a chance. Now, for most people, that would be an absolutely insane thing to do for a game of Pokemon. But as you'll soon see, for me, that's just another Tuesday. I am beyond grateful for all the support you've given me already. These videos wouldn't be possible without you. So if you're feeling so inclined, there's a link in the description down below. Thanks again to Stylish and everyone who supports. Now let's get on with the video. Right, so in the wonderful world of statistics, there are three main definitions of an average. The mean, the median, and the mode. The triple M's of math, the Mobius M. Mobius of data analysis. Wow. The median represents the middle of a data set. So say you had a bunch of random numbers. In order to find the median, you just put them in ascending order, then start crossing out numbers on the end until you reach the center point. Or, you know, you could just throw it into a programmer's spreadsheet to do it for you. This is the 21st century, people. The advantage of the median is that it is very resistant to outliers. If all your data points are between 1 and 10, except one absolute freak at 10 billion, that's fine. You just cross it out, it's gone, literally doesn't matter. The mode is the most common data point in your set, the one that shows up the most. Pretty simple. And finally, we have the mean. To find this one, you add up all of your data points and then divide by the number of data points you have. This will give you a single value that approximates the whole set, even if it doesn't actually match any of your data points. It's kind of like how the average male height in America is 5 foot 9, even though most people aren't actually 5 foot 9. Any one of these might be a better representation depending on the shape of your data set and what you're really trying to find. So, how do we apply these to the world of Pokemon? Well, in lots of ways. For example, if we simply list out all 1,025 Pokemon by their Pokedex number, we could easily find that the median Pokemon is Pansier. Of course, this will change the second a new game comes out, but as of now, you could argue that this little fire monkey is the most average Pokemon. However, Pokedex number is kinda arbitrary, it doesn't really mean anything. Instead, let's order them by their base stat total, a general representation of their strength. Now, our new median Pokemon would be Stantler, with a base stat total of 465. If this thing is an average, I don't know what is. Just a deer with some Christmas ornaments. But that's just for the median. What about the other two? 
Well, by throwing a list of every Pokemon and their base stats into a spreadsheet, we can easily calculate that the mean base stat total is 443.1. Now, obviously, no Pokemon has this exact total, BSTs don't have any decimals, but the closest would be Fero. The mode base stat total is 600, which is far greater than the mean and median. This is because the vast majority of legendary Pokemon in the game have a stat total of exactly 600, along with a smattering of other strong Pokemon and mega evolutions. If we plot all the base stat totals on a histogram, we can see that it has a bit of an odd shape, with a few distinct peaks. 300 is the most common BST for weak first stage Pokemon. Middle stages tend to be around 405, and fully evolved Pokemon tend to be in the realm of 490 or 510. And then you get into the legendary Pokemon the higher you go. So we've already got a few picks for the most average Pokemon, but why on earth would we stop there? Uh, look, we found the most powerful Pokemon, the most forgotten Pokemon, but what about the most Pokemon? Let's talk mode. There are a couple of ways you could look at this. Usually, Pokemon only come in one form. Maybe two, if the designers are feeling a little try-hard that day. And then there's Spinda, who has enough distinct forms to play Doom. Shoutouts to Adef. Never met the guy, but based on this alone, I assume he rules. At over four billion unique forms, you could certainly make the argument for Spinda as the mode Pokemon, even if they're all functionally pretty much the same. Alternatively, we could define the mode Pokemon as the one that shows up the most in the games, the one that you would probably encounter the most often. That distinction would go to Magikarp, who has appeared on a staggering 547 different routes and areas in the franchise, the most by a country mile. I'll be honest, I didn't even know there were that many areas to begin with. Turns out, if you've got a puddle and a fishing rod, you can pull a Magikarp out of it. However, you could make the argument that since you have to go out of your way to fish for it, you probably won't actually see it that often. By that definition, Tentacool would probably be the most Pokemon, appearing on 279 routes. And since they're all water routes, you can't easily avoid the encounter tiles or anything. Odds are you've run into this guy more than any other Pokemon in existence. Unless, of course, you're a Repel fiend like me, in which case that would be the two to three Pokemon you encountered before getting a chance to blow your life savings to never see a wild Pokemon again. But as interesting as all these picks are, they're all average in a very specific category. What I'm really most curious about is pound for pound the most average Pokemon. So let's bust out that old spreadsheet again, cause it's time to go wild. We've already found the mean, median, and mode for the base stat total, but that's a bit of a flawed metric to use. Two Pokemon could have the exact same base stat total, but wildly different stats. So instead, let's break things down a bit more and calculate the mean, median, and mode for each of the six base stats. This already gives us some interesting information, like how Zatu has the most average defenses in the game, but we can take things even further. If we know the average for each stat individually, and we're able to find which single Pokemon is the closest to that exact stat spread, we should be able to find which single Pokemon is the most average in terms of strength, far more accurately than if we just looked at base stat total. First, let's subtract every Pokemon's individual base stat from the true mean, median, or mode for that whole stat. Then, since we're only interested in each Pokemon's 
distance from the average and not really whether they're higher or lower, let's take the absolute value of that, which basically just means we chuck out any negative signs that happen to show up. This will tell us how far away each Pokemon stat is from the mean, median, or mode. What we'll do next is take the sum of all these differences for each Pokemon to find the total number of points they are away from the average stat spread. Whichever Pokemon has the lowest sum is the winner. But before revealing the most average, I thought we should give one last look at our special snowflakes. Regardless of the definition you use, Eternatus Max is the least average Pokemon because it's absolutely cracked out of its mind. Shuckle and Chansey also rank near the bottom despite having base stat totals that are quite close to the average. It just goes to show, sometimes it's not about the size of your stats, it's how you use them. And in this case, arguably, not that effectively. But I think it's just about time for the moment you've all been waiting for. The true most average Pokemon. Starting with the sum of the differences for all of the modes, our winner is Mudbray. It is dead on the money in attack and defense, and pretty close in HP, speed, and special attack. The only real significant difference is its low special defense, but we'll let that slide. However, I'm less inclined to definitively call Mudbray the most average Pokemon based on the modes alone. Because if we look at the median and the mean, we find that the same Pokemon came out on top, which, if you ask me, is enough definitive proof to say that the statistically most average Pokemon is cast for. It's got 70s across the board in every stat, which just so happens to be pretty close, usually slightly below the true average. This little floating cloud baby is truly the plain toast of Pokemon. It is the mid amongst mid. It is completely and perfectly whelming. And hey, it's even got four different forms, which, I mean, you know, is behind Spinda by a factor of about a billion, but somehow is still ranked kind of close to the top for the mode as well. And look, if you're one of the three cast form stands that probably exists out there, don't be mad. There's nothing wrong with being average. I mean, think about it this way. Your favorite Pokemon is remarkably unremarkable. It takes some serious skill, nay, courage, to be so unabashedly uninteresting. You're like that one guy from Parks and Rec that got fired for being too boring, and nobody really remembers his name, but whenever they see him, they're like, oh yeah, that guy. And look, you'll never win any other contest, but at least for today, you can hold your head up high and say that when it comes to being completely and utterly average, you are the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Until Gen 10 comes out and they release a new Spinda with this exact stat spread. Then you're kind of cooked. And a huge thank you to all my supporters on Patreon, including Alakazam, Aspa102, Big Dog Tie for to Win, Captain Kirby, Sidian, Sherry and Mark, Stylish, The Boss Killer 94, Tie Studio, Tricks of Crows, and did you know that the character limit on Patreon is very high? Well, it is high enough, in fact, that I could name myself M.